Hello, hello, it's me, LaShawn, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you decided to join me here once again, and I'm just so happy today. Okay, now, if you're new here, please take a moment to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Okay, all the business stuff taken care of. I wanted to talk about our children. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because some of us have none. One, two, three, four, five. However many we have, they have different personalities. They're totally different. Your relationship with each one is a different one. And so I wanted to talk today about my relationship with my three children. Now, I have three, as you know, and they're all grown. I have Elijah, who's about to turn 30. I have Lyric, that's 24. She's my only daughter. And I have Patrick, who's about to turn 22. So, as you can see, I have no babies. But, full disclaimer here, I'm not any expert or anything. When I tell you stories, it's about my own experiences. And that is <laughs> that's basically what I do. Today, I wanted to talk about my daughter. Let's get serious. <laughs> I want to talk about my daughter because people ask me, uh, you know, about the relationship I have with my daughter. Now, at the beginning, uh, it was a little shaky. She didn't choose me. Okay. Uh, she's always been a daddy's girl, and I had to deal with that most of her life. But, you know, she loved me and all, but I was her second choice. Okay. And that was fine and everything, but... I wanted to talk today about when you pray and how you pray, because um, I remember when I had Elijah, he's my oldest son. I didn't want any more kids, okay? I was just, woo, that, it, uh, it was a tough one, okay? Diabetes, iron deficiencies, you know, blood transfusions, it was a lot. So, I knew uh, as he was starting to get older, I think Elijah was, uh, uh, he was around five-ish when Lyric was born. That's my daughter, if you're new here. My daughter's name is Lyric, and I named her Lyric because she was always moving in my stomach. So anyway, so when I prayed, um, I, first I found out I was pregnant. Let's get that out the way. I found out I was pregnant with Lyric, and it was a, a shock, to say the least, because Elijah was at the age where he started kindergarten and he was like, bye bye. So I really could have got that second win and went back to school again and everything. But when I got pregnant, I said, I prayed to God for a daughter because I figured that'd be it. You know, one boy, one girl, that's it. So I prayed, I, I prayed for her. And I, and as the pregnancy uh, got further and then I found out I was having a girl, I was excited. All I thought about was combing hair and matching outfits. I don't know if that's what most women think of, you know, when they know they're having a girl, that they'll have a perfect relationship and everything. But nothing's perfect. I found out that, okay, my mother and me had a decent relationship. My mother's passed. Uh we had a decent relationship, but it was nothing to, to write to, to write home to mama about. Okay, it wasn't. My mother was an alcoholic, and when she was in her clarity, uh, we did deep talks, and she exposed me to music and the theater and art. She was a wonderful woman, and uh, she taught me a lot of things. So I said that if one day I had a daughter, I'd try to teach her all those things and we'd have this great relationship and everything. So as I get old, I learn that our relationship has changed. Now, uh, especially since she is half of me, okay, and half of my mama. I don't know where her father come in at. She looked like him, uh, but uh, that's about it, okay? Because we are uh, strong-minded women who are very opinionated and say how we feel. We had a difficult, I got sick, I think it was the end of July, and I got sick and I just, I, I found out that I would have to come home with um, my pick line still in, that's so that I can receive IVs and, and things like that at home. And so the VA paid for a home health aide and a home health nurse to get me through that tough times, but it was only limited. So I had three kids at the time. 
still do. <laughs> but only one was in this uh, in Jacksonville. But the one that was in Jacksonville was a music. He's a musician, so he wasn't in the state per se. So I let all my children know that I was coming home, but these are the conditions I'm coming home. Well, I thought in my condition that at least one of them would make sure that I was okay. Um, and they do. They do make sure I'm okay, but I've learned that they can't come running like they used to. And um, classic example is my daughter. She is a teacher full time now, Monday through Friday. And when she get her weekend, she's just, it's not really thinking about mother. It's uh, hitting the road and go wherever she's going with her boyfriend. So this lesson, this uh, YouTube video today is about perception um, and uh, what you pray for. And it's also about realization because my perception was that one of them would always be around. Um, my misconception was that I could deal with a major uh, health problem at home. Uh, I had the option to stay in the hospital. I didn't want to. Um, and so when I decided to come home, I needed a nurse to come home with me. And it was a very, I, I do believe, uh, I know I talked about when I was in ICU, I talked about falling, I talked about all my health problems, but I think that in July of 2021 of this year was the roughest time of my life because of the particular treatment that I needed to get at the time and what I needed from my children. So that is the misconception because what my expectations were is not what I got. And that is partially my fault. So this is the lesson here. If you have grown children, don't assume anything at this point because they're off in school and work and love and all of those things take precedence over you. And once you realize that, then you um, accordingly will change things up. And that's what I did. This is, I don't know uh, when you're watching this video, but this is the first week of September and I have uh, reorganized my whole situation. I've reorganized the day that my, my nurse's aide comes. Everything is so that I can um, be better and do better. So also my relationships with my children. So instead of focusing all my energy on trying to see which one is going to come see about me, I mean, it's, I'm being honest here. I switch that to I don't expect anything. If they if one pop up, they pop up. If two pop up, they pop up. I did a video last week because I had two of my three children. I had both my sons over and um, I cooked. I made pork chops and uh, I made baked pork chops that day, macaroni and cheese, and we had uh, cornbread. My phone all the way over there. I know you just heard it, but it's all the way over there. And that joke is loud as hell. But anyway, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Because when I prayed, when I was pregnant, I begged God for a daughter. <laughs> and I have one. And she is exactly like my mother. She's exactly like me. She's strong, opinionated. Uh, she's motivated. Uh, I don't think anything can stop her. So the moral of the story is... Never try to tame your children. Never try to have them closer to you. Yes, you need them sometimes. And in July, I needed my children. But at the same time, it's just not part of what they're doing right now. And you can't get angry or you can't get upset because they can't get to you, um, you know, as quickly as you want them to. You want your children to be strong, motivated, ambitious, and, you know, all those things wrapped into one. So when you create a child like that who be later becomes adult, don't get angry because they have other things to do. So mostly this video is for me. Remember, YouTube is part of my therapy. And part of my therapy is admitting when I'm wrong, which is I'm quick to do. But I have to figure out if I'm wrong first. Okay, you could tell me I'm wrong, but I have to figure it out for myself. That's the stuff.
seriously though i'm joking but again i have three children i only have one daughter so the joke around here is she's my favorite daughter of course she is she's my only daughter so raise your children do the best you can and when they fly away it's okay for them to fly away i'm alone i'm by myself here um i'm in jacksonville florida and I love my life. I'm happy. When I'm not sick, I'm happy. When I'm sick, I'm praying. Okay? Telling God, look, I could this is slowing me down. I got, I got things to do. You know? I just want to be a better person. And part of me being a better person is being a better mother. And I'm trying every single day. My oldest son, Elijah, I saw him yesterday. And as usual, we hear words like we always do. He's so strong and opinionated. But I always get my point across. I'm trying to teach him how to be more frugal. He go through so much money. It's just, he'll be telling me about something he did the weekend. And I'll be like, yeah, but you still don't have your car. Okay? You still didn't get another car. Your car is gone. So what are you going to do now? And he, he's just so for the moment. He's not a planner. And uh, that's part of what makes him unique. And I can't change him. I just want him to be a little more responsible so that he can have better opportunities. Um, and also, my daughter is moving on. Uh, she's in a long uh, relationship. Children might follow. I don't know. I'm 52. I have no grandchildren. Uh, but I have nephews and nieces. And I also have great nieces and nephews at this point. So, you know, and then it's the baby. He's a musician and he's only 21. And when I talk about, is he ever going to have children or whatever? He looked right through me with his eyes. Okay. He looked like I'm talking in another language. Like what, what, what did you just say? So that's how it is. But I'm happy. I'm joyful. I have a nice relationship with all three of my children. It's not the best relationship, but it's what it is what it is. I'm feeling better. I'm happy. I'm healthy. And part of me being happy and healthy is that I have all three of my children nearby, a phone call away. So if you are the mother of adult children, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm feeling right now. And if you're one of those children that out there, you better call and text your mom. Okay. Anyway, let's breathe in and breathe out and get this day started. Am I frowning? Okay, breathe in and breathe out. Let's go. Here we go. We're going to have a great day. We're going to have a stress-free day. You're going to go to work, to school, wherever you got to go today. And you're going to hold your head up and be positive. Okay, tomorrow is not promised. Let's not waste another moment, okay? Now remember, God loves you, and so do I. Have a blessed day. I don't know how I can't see. Oh, yeah.